Gentleman, did you vow to? Trump man, okay? Believe me. <laughs> I'm probably the best man there ever is. Oh Nobody mons like me, okay? <laughs> Nerd On. What's up, guys? Welcome to Nerd On, the podcast you didn't need, but you deserve. We have a very special episode today. It's our first guest. Yes, it is. Woo! I'm yeah. very excited. We have with us Jeff Nimoy. Hello, mm-hmm. hello, hello. Oh, that mm-hmm. voice. I might be your first guest, but, you know... You, this is my first time like being in a room with four guys, all with microphones like surrounding me. <laughs> I feel like I'm a you know, Nuremberg pr- child. <laughs> they made me do anime, I didn't want to, I was just following orders. It's perfect. So, so yeah, we're very I like excited. Where this about episode this. is going already. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm Josh, I'm one of the hosts, uh, producer, I do the audio for the show. We're going to keep it short this episode because we really have a lot to talk about. Yes, it's we do. It's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. To mm-hmm. my left. Just hiding my raging nerd on right now. My <laughs> name is Tom. <laughs> I am the resident uh, comic book fiend, uh, anime freak, uh, terminally Asian dude. Yeah. Well, uh, I've never met one of you guys before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're a rare breed. We're a rare breed. Wow. One in a jillion. Um, and I you know, independently make short films with Corey. Ah, yes. Yeah. Uh, that's me. I'm Corey. Uh, musician. And uh, I, I got the dynamic mic now because I'm too loud and blow out the other ones. <laughs> Uh, so I'm the special needs kid. You of the violate group. my ears. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Ali, resident YouTuber, broadcaster, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And yeah. Yeah. I want to know what these et cetera's are someday. Someday we'll find out. They'll, they'll yeah. get uncovered. Uh, okay. Awesome. Leave the audience wanting more. And of course, we have Jeff Nimoy. Ta-da. Welcome, sir. So thank you. Before anybody asks, and yeah. I know that it's going to get asks. Go ahead. Get it out of the way. <laughs> Let's get it out of the way. Yes, I'm Jewish. Jeff. <laughs> okay, Just Mazel tov. Just <laughs> That went a lot easier than I thought it was going to. Good. Um, moving on. Moving on. So, Nimoy. Yes. So, most people would say any relation? Well, I wrote a whole article about that. Okay. Uh, funny you should ask. And... Um, People ask me that constantly. I'm Bank sure. tellers and, you know, everyone I've ever run into, you know, anyone who looks at my ID, you know, uh-huh. bouncers uh, when they're throwing me <laughs> out. Every time. <laughs> uh, so, Box uh, office right. attendees. So I wrote an article about it. Leonard Nimoy was my cousin. Mm-hmm. He was my second cousin once removed. And I wrote an article a year after he passed away called uh, The Other Nimoy. These are the adventures of a second cousin. These are the voyages, sorry. These are the, vo- <laughs> the voyages of a second cousin once removed. And you could just Google me and yeah. say the other yeah. Nimoy and Check it, that it'll, out. it'll come up. And, okay. Uh, I'll put it, a link it, to that. And it was post. all, thanks. It was all about a, my relationship with Leonard yeah. and my relationship with just having the name Nimoy yeah. growing up. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. And everything that. that entails. Yeah. Did that, um, did that, push you at all? Did he influence? I mean, we'll read the article, well, we, but just yes. for everybody playing we, the home game. In, in yeah, terms of uh, you mean me going into show business? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a whole nother... We could do a podcast just on that. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Challenge we got some questions <laughs> pertaining to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, if you're offering, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I met Leonard when I was 16. Mm-hmm. I came out here to visit a, a, an uncle that was very close with Leonard. And uh, then... I don't know how many years later, probably four years later, I'm guessing. Yes, it was four years later. Um, I read in in the newspaper in New York. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. And I read in the newspaper that Three Men and a Baby, directed by Leonard Nimoy, was coming out to New York to film for two weeks. (laughs) Yeah. And I I was just so – I was at NYU at the time studying to be an actor. And I was just so naive about how anything worked. And I just called up. Like Walt Disney Pictures. <laughs> I like What's up, guys? It, you know, do they even still have information anymore? 411? I don't I know. I think if it they still do. is a thing. I so I just said, uh, you know, Walt Disney Studios, Burbank, California. Uh, and they, you know, I called up and I said, Leonard Nimoy's office. And they're like, please hold. I'm like, wow. Oh, oh my God. They just gonna, let you through. And they're going to connect me. You were born it's in the much, wrong time. Someone, much answered, different time frame. someone wow. answered the phone at Leonard's uh, assistant at the time, a woman named Ori Saran. She just answered the phone. Leonard Nimoy. 
Nimoy's office. I'm like, shout out to Oyster Ron. <laughs> shout out. I said, uh, hi, I'm uh, Leonard Nimoy's cousin. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I read that uh, he's here in New York where I live and uh, I'm looking for a job. That's all I said, a job. I didn't know anything wow. about anything. And she said, uh, oh, I have Leonard on the other line. Hold on. I'm like, oh, no, now she's going <laughs> to Oh, my God. I'm going to be the fraud that I am, but I'm not. I'm, I'm really his cousin. So she comes back and he goes, Leonard wants to know how you're related. Mm-hmm. And I went into the whole spiel about like his grandfather and my gra- his father and my grandfather were first cousins. So yeah. that makes him and my father's second cousin. Go through the whole lineage of everything. Like the whole thing. <laughs> and she's like, uh, okay, hold on. And she gets back on the phone. Uh, with him, she gets back on me. She goes, "All right, six a.m. Central Park West and Ninety Third Street. Show up." Bada bing, bada wow. bing. Wow, wow. And, and I was a <laughs> holy shit. He made he made me a production assistant. I don't know if anybody here knows what. Oh that yeah, is. Uh, yeah. Just, we're all kind of film. Okay, film right. Guys yeah, too. I have a series called PAs. Yeah, there you go. So I was a PA for two weeks on location in New York City. And I got to meet everybody. And, you know, when your last name is Nimoy, you're treated like gold, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's royalty. Great. Yeah. Imagine. Even though it was only the second time I was meeting him, like Ted Danson became friends with me. Wow. And it was great. Jeez. You know, yeah. So, and this is all in the, uh, a lot of it's in the article. Yeah. yeah. You know? I Check it out at home. Yeah, I'll definitely link it on the post. I'll so be checking it out when I get home. Full right. on. You could listen to this podcast while you read it. <laughs> there you go. Hey. Boom. But, but eventually, uh, yes, uh, Ori Saran, the assistant that I met, mentioned earlier she's the one who actually convinced me to come to california where she thought my name would go a lot further oh very yeah. cool and so, so i mean it hasn't gone far at all you I mean right now <laughs> <laughs> well in this room i'm paul mccartney right? there you go <laughs> out, out in the streets i'm just a schlub you know <laughs> <laughs> well that's awesome that's a really cool a uh, little bit of tidbit i like that yeah it's a lot of origin fun. story. Right place, right time. That's, That's right, the cool. origin story, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Jeff Nimoy but, origin but, story. But getting into anime is a whole other story as well. It's, yeah. it's just a, uh, I was doing a, a a show called The Mutant League based on a video game. It was a, yeah. two seasons of a cartoon. And, uh, and actually, I got cast out of this show I was doing with Bonnie, is, which is how I know Josh. Shout out to Bonnie. Shout out to Bonnie. Um, so... Uh, so I was doing this cartoon and someone uh, in the cast said, hey, uh, you know, you're struggling to make ends meet as an actor. Uh, a great way to, you know, just supplement your income is to do these little anime jobs. Mm-hmm. They don't pay much and you just play like a m- bunch of little different roles until maybe you can get an audition and get a bigger role. And that's what I did. I met a lot of people at Saban Entertainment sure. and, wow. uh, and I was wow. just doing yeah. Little, yeah. little roles here and there. Uh, a show called Bit the Cupid. A show called Huckle- Honey Bee Hutch mm-hmm. and uh, things like that. <laughs> Real classic. <laughs> and and uh, eventually I wound up uh, pitching a, an original idea to Fox Kids. Oh, cool. And mm-hmm. all those people that hired me to do voices on anime were now working for me as an executive producer. Yeah. Oh, it, it was wow. kind of crazy, right? So, so that's when I really got into writing and executive producing stuff and producing stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, what happened after that was, uh, a show came around that, uh, they were like, Hey, you know, you did all this other stuff for us. We have a show, this really crappy, you know, Japanese mm. show <laughs> <laughs> that we'd love to make into, you know, funnier and more Americanized. It's very Japanese right now. And, you know, we tur- we passed on Pokemon and we're really looking, you know, we're beating ourselves up over that. And <laughs> yeah, they so, are. So wow. is everybody else, of course, yeah, right. except Warner Brothers. So, so uh, it was this show and they gave me a, a DV, uh, not a DVD, a uh, Video cassette, Daddy. What's a VCR? Uh, they gave me a, <laughs> oh god, that happens to me daily. <laughs> <laughs> they gave me a video cassette of the show called Digimon. Yeah, yep. and yeah. and my partner at the time, Bob Buckholtz, who Bonnie also knows. Shout out to Bob. We uh, we watched this half hour and we looked at each other. And we're like. Who's going to watch this crap? <laughs> <laughs> this guy. It was this guy, guy here. These guys. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Can I curse on this show? Oh, Absolutely. Well, yes. yeah. We said As- shit. We didn't yeah. say crap. Okay. And we're no like, who's going to watch fucking this cursing. shit? <laughs> <laughs> and we passed. We said, no, we don't want to be have oh, anything wow. to do with it. Um, and I auditioned for it as an actor mm-hmm. separately. And uh, I was, uh, uh, I know the, the producer, Terry, wanted me to play Matt. 
but mm. I lost out to Michael Reese and I, I wound up with no roles actually. And then like they called me in to like play Izzy's dad, <laughs> yeah. you know, something like that. And while I was there for Izzy's dad, they said, uh, you know, Joshua Seth, who plays Ty, he also mm. plays like 15 other roles. And the whole show is starting to sound like Josh. <laughs> <laughs> so we're only the Josh gonna, show. <laughs> so we're only going to have Josh play uh, Ty, and we're going to take everything away. One of those roles was a, a character named Tentomon. Yes. <clears throat> and Josh did him like this. It was very sort of Johnny Carson doing Jackie Gleason. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Izzy. <laughs> and uh, so I started like. It, I had to imitate, I had to voice match Josh yeah. for my first episode. So the first episode you hear me on, I don't know what, episode four, episode eight, whatever. Oh, wow. You'll hear, it sounds very different than, you know, what I started to do later on. It became mine, mine and mine more and more. And before you know it, I was... Tentamon! Yeah. Did you want to? <laughs> yes, that's it. You good, Tom? That's you got it? it. Yeah, right. I was singing all over. I was singing all over my mind. Well, actually, I'm seeing Mochimon evolving to fucking Tentamon. Mochimon. Yeah. So, so, yeah. <laughs> that's it. So then, uh, Grandpa th Tom yeah. is <laughs> he's usually a resident grump of the group. Yeah. So you've just opened this whole new part of him. Well, later on, about episode sixteen ish, fourteen ish. Um, Bob and I, we were out of work. We just finished a project and we had nothing. And we we're like, hmm, we don't have too many prospects. Maybe that Digimon deal is still on the table. <laughs> and we went back and eventually we became showrunners of Digimon. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah. Nice. That's fantastic. And that's how that's, that's awesome. And you've that, kind of done a little bit of all of it. You did some writing as well, right? We did all directing. the writing. Uh, once we once we joined on, yeah, we did all the episodes. writing yeah. and all the uh, directing. Um, before that, there were like four or five directors, Wendy Lee being the main director, but there were a lot of other directors, Michael mm -hmm. Storich, Richard Epcar, David Walsh, uh, even a couple others that were guest starring. And, and they wanted more consistency. And poor Wendy, she went on her honeymoon and- Shout out to Wendy. Michael mm -hmm. was supposed to fill in for her, Michael Sorich, and he uh, he forgot he was booked for something else, and oh, they no. called me up knowing that you know I'd worked with him before because I was an executive producer. They called me up and like, can you come over? And I lived like two minutes from the studio, <laughs> <laughs> and can you come over and direct this week? And I did, and uh, at the end of that week, they were like, will you be the showrunner? Wow. Oh my god! And poor Wendy oh, came back shit. from her honeymoon. She was out of a job. Oh, oh man! man. You no, know, it's very sad. No, but good out. for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how the the how show business has changed. It's like I'm I'm in my early 30s and mm -hmm. like Bonnie's always telling me about the salad days. Yeah, the salad days of showbiz, and right, she's right. like, you know, Josh, I used to be able to go into a studio that I'm working at as a producer and just go, hey, hire my husband, yeah. and they'd be like, all right, cool. Right now, it's like. Like I got hired by a studio recently and I had to go through this Ooh. extreme background check that was just yeah. like stressful. And I was like, I I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> I recycle. I recycle. <laughs> <laughs> I grow some of my own food. What is happening? Did you know that about that one time I tried weed in high school? Did they know about that? I, that's how my mind was going. It was like, oh no. I, I tried weed when I was like living in Seattle. Oh shit. I cleared my search history. How can they know? They're going to call they... David, the dealer. They know him. Yeah. I have private browsing on. That's awesome. Uh, but yeah, I man, that's kind of cool. It's really a snowball kind of thing for yeah. you. Yeah. And then, uh, I know we started writing around episode, I don't know if it was 14 or 16, um, but we, I I directed parts of that script, I know. It was mm -hmm. almost finished when I started directing that week, but I recognized it because I, I wrote it and I was like, oh, that was the first one we wrote. And there was still like a few lines to be recorded in that one. So somewhere in the late teens, early 20s, I took over. But I couldn't tell you which is the first one I completely directed. You know? <laughs> yeah. Because you direct one actor at a time when, in anime. And, uh, you know, so so it, it could take a while to direct one script. You right. You have to fill one out. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm fascinated at the uh, the sort of writing portion of it because it's, mm -hmm. you know, is it, it's uh, I'm assuming they're coming like from Japan. Yeah, it's right. like a localization. And there's right? some kind of localization. This is, this is part of the reason Bob and I got this job was – we, when we were doing improv comedy with Bonnie, Bonnie did some of these, we would do these movie dubbings and mm. we would take away all the sound and we'd sit in the front row of a movie theater and with microphones and dub the movie live. Not, <laughs> not like yeah. Mystery Science Theater <laughs> where they're just commenting on the movie running. Yeah. We're making the movie up as wow. we go along. That's making cool. Advice. And we're, you know, I'm playing this like we did the Batman 1966 movie. <laughs> and, and I played Robin. Yeah. So every time Robin talked, I talked like him. Hey, Batman. You know, and then I played Burgess Meredith. 
as you know, the penguin as Burgess Meredith, but in Rocky, you know, <laughs> like, you gotta fight him hard, Batman, like you've done before. That was beautiful. <laughs> Cut the chicken, Batman. <laughs> so we would do things like that, and uh, and because of that sort of dubbing experience, mm-hmm. making something that wasn't there look like it's there now. Um, that's when they came to us and said, "We've got all these Japanese cartoons that we need to, you know, redub." You know, and they were doing it before without us, but. We had won an Emmy Award for doing it with yeah. NFL Films. So we had a pedigree right. going. So whereas yeah. other ADR uh, writers might just follow the translation mm-hmm. and just try to make the best American adaptation of it. Right. We, we kind of threw away the translation. Almost recreating a wheel. Almost. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. We awesome. threw away the translation. Kind of have to. Like if you wanted someone to... If you wanted a writer to follow the translation, they wouldn't hire us. We were more of like... You don't know what to do with this show. We'll make it into something new. <laughs> now, now we, we have to follow the, the basic storyline pretty closely. Right. Because we can't rewrite the story in episode one. We'll run into a lot of problems in episode 52 if we do that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, uh, but other than that. But lines were free will. So it's yeah, like right. Curb Your Enthusiasm Dialogue. kind of does that. They have their story, but the scene is just you get handed a piece of paper. Correct, right. And they go, go. Right, There's this no is lines. what we have to accomplish in the scene. Right. Everything else is up for grabs. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we have to get the names right because there's there was a lot of moving parts. There's the toy company, Bandai, and there was the animation company, and then the American distri- distributor. So we... We couldn't fudge on the names. We couldn't change the names. Right. <clears throat> uh, so but you had a lot of freedom that a lot of people don't have for writing. Exactly. Which is we had a lot cool. of freedom. So and and almost always the note on Digimon would be make it funnier, make it funnier, mm. make punch it, it up, right. punch it up. <laughs> and and then you know Fox you kids. read on the internet. There's so many bad puns and bad jokes. <laughs> Jeff Nimoy ruined Digimon. Wow. Whatever. <laughs> or you could not have seen it. You know, those are your two choices. Did you have a, like a like a different reception once you started taking over the show? And like, did you did you feel like not a backlash, but or, or just like an adjustment in how? Well, the people... internet was not popular yet. Right. This so was like right, right, right. Nineteen Ron Tomatoes didn't exist. It, you know, so the it vocal was, few were not so right. Vocal. It was it was at a time where you'd see a lot of commercials about dot coms, and people would go. What is that commercial for? What is what yeah. is a dot com? We What's don't a go know. GoDaddy. That, right. <laughs> GoDaddy was way in the future. <laughs> so we didn't know any of that stuff yet. Um, so all I know is when I took over, the ratings really jumped. And oh, good. That there you go. Been, could have been a coincidence though. I can't really take credit for it. But sure I, you can. But I, I, I <laughs> but do, you can. Going to I do when I go on job <laughs> interviews. Yeah, yeah. There you go. But in fairness to the people that came before me, I can't really I don't know don't if know. that's really the case. Yeah. It could have just taken them a while to get their mm-hmm. their legs up, and they would have been that popular whether I took over or not. You don't know, you know, oh, any, yeah. any kind of hit. But because it was such a massive hit, that's it. I my career was in anime. You, I, I can't get out of it today, even if I. <laughs> I've tried. I've tried. They pull me back in. <laughs> I mean, uh, Digimon try. You know, like Which it's I mean, coming out. Uh, yeah, they they're just announced today actually uh, that they're releasing it. Uh, Confession, the third mm, installment, yeah. on uh, December fifth. Awesome! Yeah. Is Mark your calendars, for, y'all, for theatrical release? Uh, DVD. Okay, there you go. Because I know the first one had, I think, had like a limited theatrical limited release. Limited theatrical yeah. release. Yeah. Yeah. As well. So this is they just announced the DVD. We did a premiere at Anime Expo, mm. and Joshua, Seth, and uh, Colleen O'Shaughnessy and myself did a panel after the. Oh, it was, cool! Yeah, it was great. A lot of fun. That's, that's, yeah, do you enjoy doing the conventions? I, I do. I cursed a lot, a lot more nice. than I do. <laughs> I, I forget sometimes there are teenagers in the audience, but I don't give a shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's adult. It's adult Digimon. So I mean, like they all grew up and they're all becoming like you know adults now. Yeah. And they're still loving it. Yeah. I mean, I, I when I was a kid, I wasn't. I wasn't into Pokemon. We right. didn't talk about it. We, we talked a little bit we can't, about we can't, our... we can't mention Pokemon here. No. <laughs> I, used to, I used to actually find actors who said the P word. Oh. A, a, a dollar. <laughs> yeah, see? see, exactly. It's like yeah. a curse jar. We, we have a we curse threw, jar. We threw a little party it's at the end. It's the enemy. That's uh, awesome. <laughs> yes, but I was cool. way into Digimon. Like, oh. I, we made we made fun of the theme song in our first episode because <laughs> we were talking about old theme songs. Yeah, yeah. But... I watched Digimon. I never yeah. got into the the P word, um, so <laughs> I got to like use a, that. That's great. I had a well, like I had a Digivice. I had like yeah. all those different things, and I would watch yeah. it every day. 
you know, the crest of courage and yeah. all that. Stuff. I sign that stuff to, still to this. I actually have really a hard. watch face of that. <laughs> Do you really? It's really hard yeah. signing a crest of courage. Or, you know, it's very small. Um, you know, before every episode, before we wrote every episode, Bob and I, I force him to listen to the theme song <laughs> to get yeah. him into the mode. Get He's like, all right, let's start work. I'm like, no, we got to listen to the theme song. <laughs> He'd be like, oh, I can't stand that theme song. I don't want to so hear it again. I'm like, sit down, listen. And we'd play it. And every time he'd sit there grumbling, all like, you know, like Tom before today, <laughs> he'd sit there all angry, you know, listening to it. But every time went, you know, uh, um, <laughs> what's the part where uh, champions of the digital and world. world. Yeah. yeah. So he would, he would just sit there grumbling and then he'd go world. And then <laughs> <I'm laughs> <straight. laughs> Mon comes over the entire And island. then I knew he's ready to write. He's, he's in, in it. it. Yeah, he's in it. Yeah. Digimon. <laughs> so I gotta ask, out of the uh, out of the uh, writing, directing, acting, what was your favorite position or role in in that show? The directing. Yeah, you, know, you can shape the performances, and I loved working with ninety nine percent of the actors, and uh, we we're all friends. We're still friends to this day. Yeah. So, um, nice. And um, it. It's just that you have the most sort of like control over the situation. Writing you do too, but you know they're going to give you notes on all that yeah. stuff, and and you don't know what the actor is going to do with the material anyway. You know, so you you can hear it in your head a million times when you write it, but until they actually perform it, you don't know. And it's 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 a collaboration. Yeah, it's all a give and take. All of show business, the best of show business is a collaboration. Right. You know? Even an auteur like, uh, you know, myself, Woody Allen, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you know, Albert Brooks, you know, people that, you know, write, direct, produce uh, everything. Mm -hmm. they, you still need a collaboration. Oh, you know? yeah. It's nothing without it. Yeah. I agree. It's, it's yes, entertainment like this. This is a collaboration. We no, we have to work me. together. We all have <laughs> different skills. And I it's run like, this whole thing. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, There's but, Tom. <laughs> but to answer your question from yeah. a little earlier, yeah, I do love doing conventions. Uh, I love the travel part. Uh, and uh, Oh, yeah. And, and uh, I love meeting people. You know, when we do this show, these shows, we're in recording rooms. There are no windows. They're dark. We, we don't. You don't think about that people are watching this when you're actually making <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. And then you go out there and you realize what an impact you made yeah. on people's lives. Oh, yeah. People are, you know, cry to me. And what, what freaks me out, though, is mostly a, a grown adults come to me and say, <laughs> What? Hey, thank you for my childhood. I'm like, Childhood? Aren't I like only a year older than you? And, and then it makes me realize, Oh my God, I'm 20 years older than you. Oh, no. <laughs> like, I bought toys and I hear your voice when I look at that toy. <laughs> <laughs> that's the crazy part. It's like, Oh, Oh, Jesus, you know, that's, no, what, that's but the people, reality. You know, people like, they literally cry. Like they'll yeah. say like, you know, my, my, uh, mother had, you know, cancer and we'd watch Wolf, we'd watch Trigun together, mm. you know, while she was recovering and like it brought us together and we really, and you were our fame. I'm going to start crying now talking about it. We, you know, you were our favorite character and when Wolfwood died, we cried. That's my favorite character on that show. Oh, yeah. For sure. Thanks. Yeah. You know, I, I was just talking about this at my last convention that I did. Um, I don't think Wolf would be that popular if he didn't die. People are always coming up to me and saying, I was so upset when he died. I'm like, yeah, but if he didn't he die. Great, he had a perfect arc. He had arc. to, yeah. He such a great yeah. arc. If he didn't that. die, perfect I wouldn't be here. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's. Uh, I, I totally agree with that. I think it's, it's the perfect bookend to his arc. I mean, it's that well, whole, you know. I'm going to like nerd out a little bit. Yeah, that's please. Okay. Cause, that's cause get your nerd cool, on. Was, this is your chance. I mean, that that's why cool. we have him here. <laughs> I mean, that was the cool thing I liked about Digimon comparatively to the P word. Um, was because that <laughs> things could die and that yeah. things were finite. And then yeah. like, if things die, they become part of the digital world. Well, and right. It's just like, we if they die, a, they come back an egg. We, but. you know, there's a thing called broadcast standards and practices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't actually kill a Digimon. Exactly. So I came up with a line of Digimon never die. They just redigitize. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's Snaps why I like that. it. Yeah. That's Snaps why I liked it. it they was, get their, their digital energy gets, you know, put somewhere like, yeah. you know, reincarnation. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and the cool thing is like, there's stakes at vault, like involved. Like in, in, po in Pokemon, there was no really <gasps> stakes. <laughs> Ding, ding, ding. You owe me There's a dollar. No, there, there was no stakes or anything like that. And oh, because it just like, fame? Yeah. The world was at stake at all times. Someone was going to, like, you know, be seriously injured or become digital, right? And then in Trigun, like, Vash the Stampede Ugh. is, like, the main character. So it's like, cool, he's not going to die. Like, Wolf would, you right. know, you always were, it's like, yeah. what's going to happen with him? You know, like, yeah. him and Millie, like, what's, what's, what's Plus, he's yeah. the essence of cool. Well, I, like, think, <laughs> I think in, um, uh, I'm blanking, uh, 
Game of Thrones. Mm. Like when we first started watching that, they killed the lead character in the first season. Walking spoiler. <laughs> right. And you're all of a Sean sudden, Bean, the walking spoiler. So, yeah, so, so at that point, like everyone was like, oh my God, anything can happen in this show. And it changed everything. A lot, a lot of main characters die now mm-hmm. moving forward. But yeah, when if you can kill Wolfwood, what else could happen? Yeah. You, know, you never know. Uh, you know, an interesting story. Oh, you'll be the judge of that if it's interesting. <laughs> but uh, I auditioned for Vash the Stampede. Interesting. Uh, oh, okay. And uh, <laughs> it was the scene where he tells Wolfwood his full name. My name is someone, some, you know, yeah, it's yeah. a long, long name. And it was a really big tongue twister we had to do in sync at the audition it was really no oh, jeez a, a bad choice for them to pick for the audition seriously but anyway That's awful. yeah it was terrible <laughs> like pushing this you is, into uh, the deep end and yeah. going this way Funima- funimation right funimation no the funimation only did the movie Badlands oh, okay. Rumble which is another story this was a, a company called Animes I believe this is okay. they're no longer in business hmm. this is years ago way before cable TV was like even around it was cable but there wasn't Cartoon Network. Right. Adult Swim. Tsunami, nothing like that. None of that. This was a straight-to-DVD project. I remember getting my first Vash the Stampede rental from the library. Yeah, yeah. And that was like, where can I watch more of these things? (laughs) So what happened was I auditioned, and then while I was still there in the room, you know, auditioning by the microphone, they said, uh, do you smoke? I was like, no, because like, you sound like you smoke. You have this sort of smoky quality. <laughs> you're a little, little fry. Yeah, uh, you have yeah. A little, Take yeah. it as a compliment, maybe. <laughs> yeah, you have a cancerous sound. To your <laughs> cancerous quality to your voice. How you say <laughs> you cancerous? A, <laughs> you have a COPD-ish quality to your voice. Um, so I said, no, but uh, but I'm willing to smoke for this part. No, and they said, uh, they said, well, because we have this character, Wolfwood, who smokes. He's a chain smoker. And I think he'd be perfect for Wolfwood. And I go, great. They and were they right. Go, and they go, <laughs> okay, we'll see you in a couple of months. Boom. That was it. They never auditioned Wolfwood. They cast me right then and there. Oh, wow. So no one oh, ever man. auditioned for Wolfwood. Wow. I was the only one. And I, even I didn't audition no for Wolfwood. No big him. deal here. we got a badass in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. And uh, so that makes me feel good, you know. Yeah. That, that's that, a great, that yeah, that's a huge compliment. Yeah, thanks. So like, hey, we uh, like your voice. Hey, you want to audition? Uh, no, we'll right. just see you. So we did all that stuff, like, in this like weird studio up in like Sun Valley. It was crazy. Uh, but there was a lot of work and we all, all the actors, the usual suspects, all the big names went there. And, uh, and then 20 years later, I met my first convention, wow. ASEN in Chicago. And it's opening ceremonies, and I get up there, and I go, Hi, everybody. It's great to be at my first convention. Uh, you guys probably know me as the writer-director of Digimon and uh, probably the voice of Tentomon. And somebody yells out, like, Wolfwood! Yeah. And I'm like, what? <laughs> wow. like, Wolfwood! And crap, people are going nuts. People start cheering. Oh, wow. Pockets of people are like chanting Wolfwood. I'm like, oh, did I? Did I, did I play a guy named Wolfwood? <laughs> I had forgotten all about it. Whoa. That's and, surreal, man. And they're like, Trigon's the best! Trigon! And they're like, like, I'm practically getting a standing ovation from 10,000 people. Wow. And they're chanting oh, yeah. out Wolfwood and Trigon. And I'm like realizing it on the stage. Oh, yeah, I, I played this guy Wolfwood in this straight-to-video thing called <laughs> Trigun. And over the course of that weekend, I found out it was on Adult Swim. Yep. Yeah, and it following. became a huge yeah. hit. And I had no idea. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's surreal. And I don't know how they knew I did it. It was like non-union at the time. Wow. I didn't even use my own name. But they knew it was me. Internet's yeah. a powerful friend. That voice, <laughs> man. <laughs> that voice. What happened? I blacked out. <laughs> that was that. That show was my first introduction to anime. Like really, oh, really? I mean, like yeah. Because uh, I had watched a little bit of the P word, a little bit of Digimon, but like that was the first show I remember watching, being like, "Holy shit, this is cool. This is awesome." And Wolfwood is my favorite character. That was when I was hooked when he came well, to the show. Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, yeah. Thanks, Needle Noggin. <laughs> yes, that's it. <laughs> Do oh you, man, do you have like a, a favorite role in all the years that you've been doing this? Oh like, yeah, Wolfwood by far is yeah. my favorite because it's really the only time I got to use my own voice. Nice, right? Uh, I played young Jedi for a little bit, uh-huh. and I'm playing him in the in uh, the Tri series as well, um, and that's close to my voice. But even then, I'm putting on like a I, I had it in my head to do like a Harrison Ford. Uh, um, 
Indiana Jones type of attitude. Okay, yeah. okay. So I'm playing yeah. him a little like this, you know. Yeah. But uh, Wolfwood's really strictly me. I don't have to do anything. So I can literally do Wolfwood for hours at a time, whereas Tentomon, after about three hours, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> My voice sounds that. like, Tentomon, did you all do? <laughs> <laughs> but I can do it, you know, only so long, but Wolfwood was the best. And as chance had it, I had to do it for like 11 hours at the end um, because I was directing wow. season two, writing and directing season two of Digimon mm. and writing and directing Digimon the movie simultaneously. Wow. And I was working like 20 hours a day for months at a time. And just then Trigun calls and says, we need you for 11 hours. And I'm like, I, I don't have 11 hours. I literally, <laughs> I literally have no time. But- this will all be over in three months. You can have me then. Oh, we can't wait three months. Well, you have to. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> There's no option here. Wow. And we got it. They were like, so you're you're reneging on your you know agreement to play this role to, wow. the, to the end. I'm like, I'm not reneging on anything. I'm, I'm Just telling, telling you, you, I don't have the time. If I was an actor on camera and I booked a movie in Australia for three months, you'd be in the same right. situation. Yeah, exactly. I don't have the time. And they were like, they had people calling me, one of the directors of Trigon calling me saying, my father is a big time director and he wouldn't, he would, you know, wouldn't act this way. I'm like, you're telling me your father would turn down a major motion picture by 20th Century Fox. Mm, right. My first directing role, you know, mo ma mo major motion picture, right. 1800 yeah. screens. And I'm like, you're telling me he would give that up to do a non-union, you know, role <laughs> on a straight to video thing. And she's like, Yes. Yes, he would. Wow. I'm yeah, like, of course. your father's full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you your are. Or your father is. And, <laughs> and finally, they harassed me so much that one of the directors just called Joe Ramersa and uh, said, how, you know, how do we solve this, Jeff? Please, let's just get it done. And I said, you know what, Joe? Uh, Friday, Saturday, I'm going to only work a half day because Bob had something to do in the morning. I said, Friday night, I'm done at work at Digimon. I am going to get in my car, drive from Westwood, where Fox Kids was at the time, Saban Entertainment. And we, I drove up to Sun Valley. Oof. And I said, and we're going to do everything that night. We're going to get it all done. All 11 hours. My God. And I'm going to pull an all-nighter. I just died a little inside. Yeah. <laughs> and then... And then when it's over, it's over, and I'm done, and I never want to hear from you people again. And... Uh, and so I showed up, and where was the director that gave me such a hard time? It, Joe was there, not the, the director that gave me a hard time. Oh, she had something else to do. Mm. I was like, she was so full of shit that she, you know, she oh my laid God. all yeah, that too. guilt on Sleep. me. Right, yeah, me too. Yeah. Right. yeah. She and was we, afraid you were going to digivolve. That's yeah. What. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. And we recorded my last 11 Show hours of Punisher. work on that show, the last, you know, whatever volume, and... When I was dying at five in the morning playing the death scene, I oh, felt like you I were was dying. dying. <laughs> he was method. That's he was method. why it's so yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> Genuine <laughs> method actor. Don't want to die. <laughs> That's why it worked. <laughs> and you wanted to go to Eden. You know, see, it makes sense. I get it now. <laughs> right, right, right. So that's why it sounded authentic. All the lines, all the lines start making sense. You're like, yeah, that sounds really nice, actually. <laughs> so this finally gets some rest. <laughs> I thought there'd be more time. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. That's uh, I love that. I, I have like a favorite question, or like, what's mm. your favorite? Um, so, did you want season one? Did you want season two? Yeah. Other than is the Intentimon, because I'm assuming you have like a close relationship with him. What other Digi Destin or Digimon would be your favorite? Well, I loved working with Josh Seth. You know, to me, it's not so much the character mm -hmm. as the actor. Behind it, but, right. But in terms of character, mm -hmm. uh, I writing. think Joe was my favorite to write for. Okay. Joe was just, there's just so much fun, you know, this hypochondriac genius. <laughs> yeah. you know, so much, this is the, the crest of reliability. Yeah, the there's, I was talking about. there's so much funny stuff to write for that guy. Yeah. He goes camping and he packs extra toilet paper, you know. He's I love, neurotic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love I love all that. So, and Michael Lindsay was great as Joe as well. He was great to direct as well. Mm. I directed him in a lot of things other than that. And he was also Greymon. Was oh. Crazy, right? Joe and Greymon. Whoa. I know. And then <laughs> Lex played Metal Greymon. Um, the difference 
to me between seasons one and two, from my experience, again, this is not a fan experience. Right. It's my experience, is I started to get more control because Digimon was a hit. And I started doing different things my way. Like, I didn't want eight actors playing one set of Digivolutions. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like... Tom Fon played Agumon. Mm-hmm. Before that, someone else played the smaller rookie version, whatever mm-hmm. it was. Like Coromon. Okay, right. So <laughs> so Brian Sadal played Coromon, uh-huh. right? And then Tom Fon played Agumon. And then Michael Lindsay played Greymon. It was like musical chairs right, of voice. Then wow. Rick Lang plays Metal Greymon and so forth. Mm-hmm. And it's like, let's just have one actor, one role, one digivolution, you know. and Because yeah. you did all of the, the for the stages of Tentamon, and, right? Well, originally, uh, Josh did and them then, all, yeah, then later but on. then I came along and I was directing at that point. So I, I was just like, I'm doing everything. Right. Dope. And keep it they, consistent too for you guys. Right, yeah. it, it's, it's consistency, but also it's easy to book, you know, so there's a lot of logistics involved in booking actors and, you know, there's a budget, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, and, and a lot of a director's time is spent on time management. Yeah. And budget, not just performance. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I, I have to get that performance, but I have to get it in two hours. Mm. Otherwise, I'm going to run behind and cost money. And if you ever cost a, produ- a production money and time, you'll <laughs> never work again. You yeah. know, and so you know, that was my experience. So I started doing that. Also, like I had the idea when they started doing the uh, the dual. DNA div- Digivolution. You know, it's great to be in a room of nerds because <laughs> yeah. I don't remember anything. DNA Digivolution. It's okay, we got you. Right. We got you. Yeah. And then their voices were both. Correct. Yeah, so, so Pyle Dramon. Right. And then so Omnimon. instead they wanted to hire a new actor to play that new mm-hmm. role. And I was like, no, let's just get Paul, St. Peter, and Lex Lang to do it at the same time. You know? Or oh, cool. Or Steve Bloom. Yeah. Which is really cool. Flame Dramon. And, and, and whatever actor came in first had the, you know, the harder job they had to establish. The second guy just play it once and they repeat mm-hmm. <laughs> in the exact same phrasing. Always hoping you're second. You're like, yes, second right. thing. Mm-hmm. Which, so, which is pretty funny because, I mean, I don't know what happened first because, you know, going to Dragon Ball Z, like when they did Goku and Vegeta, you know, because Vegito, they do the same thing. Mm. I don't know if... Well, guys- I don't... I, I know for for a fact, I never saw Dragon Ball Z ah. to this day. So so I know it's, I didn't steal it from them. It's the D word. Okay, right. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> no, I mean, I, it was just a different, again, there was no, there was no Cartoon Network then. Yeah. You know, I'm sure Dragon Ball Z either came later when there was cable mm-hmm. or whatever, but you know, it was also a Texas Funimation thing. So what happened was uh, I did it and I don't know if they had the same idea yeah. or if they copied it from me. I don't know, but- it's okay. Everybody copies. No, it. I mean, which is oh, yeah. cool. I What's think that, that idea of great ideas, right? Yeah, if one person's doing it, someone else is doing it at the same time. Which is, I think, it stuck really well. And it's fine. And, and, it. and I, I actually hope they did take it from me because then I can get a little credit. Right? <laughs> yeah. In my we'll give book, it to you here. Yeah, yeah, we'll give it to you. That's you got it here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, the would you say that the. Of course, this, these we are the 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 saplings. Mm-hmm. Um, Where are you going? The voiceover industry really the industry has mm. changed a lot right i mean sure there's has. been there's been two strikes in the past like several the, years the video like, game strike yeah. i think is still going on yeah. isn't it yeah it's the and longest it's like, strike yeah. in sag history i mean when i mean it's like you're <clears throat> explaining this 11 hour uh session i mean right that probably wouldn't happen nowadays. No, but it? again, it was a non-union show. Yeah, back that's then. true. But more and, and more things are going non-union these yeah, days. Yeah, A lot of actors won't say it. And I've got my own complaints about the union where I get into arguments all the time. I have very close friends who are actually on the SAG board and mm-hmm. they, you know, they have offices at SAG, you know, that they're, they're officers of SAG, I should say. And, uh, and we get into debates all the time. And uh, I'm not a fan of the union because I... I think they're a union only for the elite members. Shout out to the elite members. (laughs) (laughs) And and they don't care enough about the average working actor as much as they should. Um, And they, uh, they, uh, there's that whole nother episode. (laughs) But a quick word about it. Yeah, please. I, I did Quentin Tarantino's voice in the dubbing in the, for broadcast TV's Pulp Fiction, mm. right? So they had to take out all the curses. Right. So, oh, so you get to see like banana uh, sandwich stuff, that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, so a lot of times the <laughs> actors jumper. will do it themselves, but Tarantino's like, hey, I'm 
not going to do that, okay? Because I made the movie I want to make, okay? And I'm not going to bash you guys by doing the voice. Perfect. Right. So, right. so, so I got to do Quentin Tarantino's voice, and that's one of my favorite movies, so I was thrilled, you know? It, it's not about my coffee in my kitchen, okay? It's about the dead brother in my garage. Oh, <laughs> right. Wow. So, so, for instance... That's awesome. SAG, like, I, I never saw a residual from that one day 10 years later. I'm wow. seeing it on, like... Broadcast TV. So I call up SAG. I'm like, where's my residuals? You're supposed to track my residuals. And three years of roundabout, you know, they're going to talk to them and SAG's going to represent me. They're like, Disney wants to give you 50 bucks. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but wow. I guarantee you, if I was Quentin Tarantino, uh -huh. they'd be all over me and be like, Hell oh, yeah. yeah, we're going to work for you. And, you know, all this stuff. And I, I know they once said to me, because I once said, well, if I was Clint Eastwood, you wouldn't say that. And they went, well, that's Clint Eastwood. Oh, wow. Oh, Jesus. Like, oh, well, my, so, but I pay like, you so there it is. Dues. Not even so, high right, There it is. So a lot of things are going non-union these days. Yeah. yeah. So that answers your question. Hey, yeah. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Residuals well, are cool. funny. Like there, uh, Bonnie has some uh, checks up there that are oh, yeah. not even worth the, oh, yeah, the one postage. Cent. <laughs> one well, cent Years ago, check. after after our improv shows, we used to go to a bar called Residuals. Oh, yeah. She used to tell me about that. Yeah. And if you brought in a, a residual check for under a dollar, you get a free drink. Drink, and they'd hang it on the wall. They had to stop because the walls are <laughs> covered. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, I say we uh, transition away from um, Digimon. Yeah. And but why? And, okay. <laughs> this has been oh, forty no. minutes. <laughs> And um, uh, focus a little bit on you, like you, what's not just time? outside of But enough about me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about you. Well, I mean, what do you think outside about me? of voiceover, like you mm. do. What's the uh, day to day? Or, like yeah. you have, you have the caveman diet like what is yeah. oh yeah it's something that, that you do right, so so i have this blog called cooking caveman with jeff nimoy cooking caveman.com check it out at home <laughs> shout out to jeff nimoy.com there it is yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no it's it. cooking caveman.com and it's all about the paleo diet uh but i have about fifty seven thousand readers but that's not a lot in the blogosphere you know but yeah it's just well you're about to have four more so <laughs> there you just, go <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just something i I, I do, you know, I just cook very healthy and I try to eat healthy, but uh, especially when I cook and just people were interested in it. So I started a blog and it's semi popular, but every now and then an anime fan will make a comment like, why is Tentomon making mayonnaise? You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's it just keeps funny, right? coming back. <laughs> <laughs> but my day to day, I wake up in the morning. First thing I do is audition. Also going back to how the business has changed. Everyone has a home studio now. Yeah. yeah. Whereas... Back in my day, we'd have to go somewhere for an audition. <laughs> yep. You'd have to have a Thomas guy tell you how to get to a oh. studio on the other side of town. Oh, man. So um, uh, I audition. I do my auditions. I'm with William Morris Endeavor. Oh, nice. As my voiceover wow. agent. Yeah, they're great. I Shout love out them. to Lou. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to yeah. WME. And uh, so I do all my auditions, and that's in the morning. Sometimes I have a group audition, and I do go to their offices, and I you know do a group uh, session uh, yeah. audition with other actors, which is always fun. Um, and then I, uh, you know, I, I make most of my living though, not as a voice actor, mostly as a writer, producer, mm -hmm. and a uh, director. Nice. So, you know, I've just got a lot of things going on there and, uh, I'm always applying for jobs. I just finished a job where I was the showrunner on a little clip show that had nothing to do with voiceover. Um, and then I, you know, I, I prep for a lot of anime conventions. I, I do a lot of those. I tour. I was just on the phone today with Anime Los Angeles, which is end of January in Ontario. Oh, nice. I don't know if I'm going to be a guest, but I'm definitely going to show up. Oh, there nice. You <laughs> there you go. And, uh, it's the they, best thing you can do. They might, show up. Yeah, yep. no, they <laughs> might have me on a panel or something. They might have me as a guest. I don't know yet. But um, I'm, I'm doing this movie in Madison, Wisconsin at GeekCon, the last weekend, full weekend of August. Um, so I'm going to be shooting some B-roll footage at Anime Los Angeles at the least. Oh, okay. nice. So I'm going That's to awesome. be there, yeah, for some things. So. Do those kind of things like give you homework? Like, hey, come prepare to talk about this or like... Well, if you're good, you will. You yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you should. But you don't have to. You can yeah. literally wing it all. Yeah. And I have you know, winged my share. Well, there's that improv dimensions. background coming out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But like, like for instance, I went at GeekCon for the first time. I had an idea for a, um, 
not a panel, but I would show the death episode of uh, Wolfwood and Trigun. Mm. Back to Eden, what's it called? Uh, yeah. Return, Return to Eden. To Eden. Return to Eden yeah. yeah. And and I did a live running commentary. Oh, and then, cool. And oh, then did cool. a Q&A afterwards. That's awesome. Yeah. So jealous. <laughs> so, and, so jealous. And it really, it really worked well, and I'm going to be doing that any convention I go to from now on. And they said they're going to do that with all their guests. You know, they'll run whoever, you know, whoever's their guest at the time, their mm. famous episode. Nice. That's, a, that's awesome. Great concept. Yeah. I love that. Thanks. Great idea. Yeah, yeah, thanks. That's super I dig cool. that. <laughs> so what's your favorite movie? Yeah. We got to get into our little, this is the yeah. things we talk about well, on the show. Well, it's it's hard to pick just one. I'll, mm. See? But, but see? certainly, <laughs> I'll just give you, no. I'll give you, a couple, and then my the most influential. Yes. There we okay. go. Ooh. So I like that. The Godfather one and two is my favorite. I would have to say. Okay. It's a Wonderful Life is my favorite. Yes. Is, I have to say. <laughs> Every Christmas, yeah. yeah. My wife and I watch Casablanca. That. Is great. I'm actually going to see it on the big screen for the first time next Ooh. month. Oh my god. Yeah. That's and, happening. I might have to get on that. And, yeah. And Pulp Fiction, I I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I would have to say the most influential was Star Wars. Mm. Okay. Star Wars, I saw. I was twelve years old. I was so blown away on by every sense in my body. It was so new. I mean, now you guys are much younger. You've seen so much. You've seen <laughs> everything. But at that time, Star Wars was so different. So like. 2001 Space Odyssey looked a little bit like it, but uh, it was an adult movie. This yeah. was for me. They made this for me. <laughs> and at that time, at that time, you can actually see a movie. You could stay in the theater and stay all day in a movie theater. You you didn't get kicked out. You could just oh, stay yeah. and watch all day. So I saw the I saw it, and this is actually going back uh, the weekend before. My friend saw it and told me all about it. And we were in Brooklyn, and I told my father. And I'm like, we have to go into Manhattan and see it. It's only playing in Manhattan. And he was like, oh, I don't want to go into Manhattan. <laughs> they charge six bucks for a movie in Manhattan. Oh, my God. <laughs> Heaven for fun. <laughs> Heaven for fun. Yeah. So, but I made him do it. He took me and it was, it lived up to the hype that my friends talked about. And when it was over, I looked at him. He looked at me and said, that was a good movie. I said, can we? Can we stay and watch it again? He said, yeah, okay. It's a two, awesome. hour, two hour and 20 minute movie or something. That's so right? cool. So we watched it the whole time. I then go home and I tell my much older sister, who's nine years older than me. She's 21 at the time. I tell her all about it, frame by frame. <laughs> line by line. Line by line. <laughs> and she's like, oh my God, sounds good. I think I'm going to go tonight with my friend. I'm like, can you take me? <laughs> and I saw it three times the first day. That's I awesome. saw wow. it. That's awful. Yeah. Awesome. So it was- it, Six hours of your life. Yeah. Yeah. It was more than that. Uh, it was just, it was what, I saw it 13 times in the theater. All, Holy all shit. told, and endless times once it went to HBO. Like when it came to HBO, I threw a party in my house. Wow. I'm like, and I made sure, like, I wasn't doing nothing that day. I wanted to see the first time it aired on HBO, even though it aired a million more times. <laughs> I wanted to be the first, you know. It was so influential on me. And it's really the reason myself, and not just myself, I've talked about this with so many of my peers, it's the reason we all wanted to go into movie making. Yeah, like, it's magic. Yeah, it's magic. It was like, magic, yeah. Space like, Wizards, are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah. So that was your first uh, nerd on, was the Star Wars. <laughs> yes, you know, um, growing up with the name Nimoy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right, okay, yeah, good, point, good point. You're, you're bombarded by it, you know. Yeah. So I was definitely into the original Star Trek. Uh, but yeah, I would say... Star Wars was my first nerd. So you're more sure. Star Wars than Star Trek, huh? I think I okay. am. Yeah, yeah. Like, I never got into anything past the first. Well, I mean, lightsabers, original. man. Lightsabers. I, I never Space really, wizards. I never really got into second gen, next generation or anything after that, yeah. really. Um, but Wrath of Khan was mm. also a movie I saw a million times. Oh, oh yeah. But, well. but I was already probably in college at that time already, or high school. Probably high school. <laughs> well, I loved it, but... It wasn't Star Wars. Star Wars was, yeah. I mean, my, my dad even remembers his first time seeing it. He snuck in a trunk to a drive-thru, oh, nice. to drive-in theater to see it. <laughs> With so, like three buddies in the trunk, just like <laughs> crunched in. So favorite character, Star Wars? Uh, favorite character in Star Wars, Han Solo, wow. for sure, yeah. The coolest. I know, yeah. badass. Yeah, I, know. I mean, it's like Vash the Stampede, Luke. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wolf went Han Solo. Yeah. He gets yeah. it. Don't get he cocky, it. kid. That's where it comes from. Yeah. It's the only one who could pull off that I know. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I know. I you still friend. have it mean more right, than so, I love you. So here's an interesting story about that. Okay. Uh, oh, you'll be the judge of that. <laughs> so my favorite Digimon season to direct, I write and direct, I wrote and direct. Interesting. Parts of one, most of one, uh, all of two. And then we just... I was burnt out. We parted ways. It was mutual parting of ways. It was a very different show too after when during three and four. So I left for three and four. And then years later, they came back with a show called Digimon Savers at the time, which we made into Digimon Data Squad. And um, I was directing Naruto at the time, the first season. And mm. I'm not, I'm just like, oh, shit. you guys, he just That's fainted. His. He fainted. Somebody get a, a cold compress. <laughs> Hide that raging nerd on Tom. <laughs> it's, it's pretty small, terminally Asian. Sorry. And, and uh, you know, I just didn't want to, uh, I wanted to return to Digimon. I just loved it. And uh, I left Naruto mm. to do Digimon Data Squad. And it wasn't a smart Business move. <laughs> <laughs> because Digimon Data Squad lasted 50 episodes, and Naruto is still going on yeah. today, I think. And then Baruto's going on now, too. So Yeah, there you go. And that's, that was you 2006, up, yeah. You so 12 that's years. why the Jedi aren't allowed emotions. They're making <laughs> decisions. Uh, uh, 11, 12 years of work I gave up. Ah, they would have fired me anyway. <laughs> <All good>. but, <laughs> <laughs> You're doing what you love. But still, I want to do Digimon. Anyway. I couldn't turn that down because Digimon Day Squad, they gave me complete control pretty oh, much. Cool. I oh, got yeah. to cast anyone I wanted. I needed approvals, but they approved everyone I wanted. In fact, they didn't want uh, Quentin Flynn as Marcus Damon, who I cast. They wanted Michael Lindsay. And as much as I love Michael Lindsay, I just thought Quentin was just perfect for, for the role. He was a fiery, redheaded, you know guy and yeah, yeah. Quentin's a fiery redheaded guy and, <laughs> and Quentin played Axel and uh, Raiden all these other redheaded angry guys Are you talking about Axel and Kingdom Hearts? yes yeah, yeah. Um, Raiden from uh, 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 Nerds come on help me oh, <laughs> so that's his man. that's his so that's, just that's like his, a, that's his strength that's what yeah, he yeah game a game uh, that game n- not uh, Metal Gear Solid Metal right? Gear so, yeah, yeah there, it there, is. Is. there you go so uh Full Metal Alchemist gear. (laughs) (laughs) I'd play it. So anyway, they gave me complete autonomy. I got to cast anyone I wanted. I even reached out to the fans and said, hey, if I was maybe casting this, who would you like to see? And they gave me some great suggestions, like Jameson Price for Commander Samson and things like that. So anyway, I couldn't turn it down. It was like complete control. And... And to play opposite Marcus Damon and that fiery redhead was the stoic Thomas... He even looked like Thomas. I cast Crispin Freeman, who was just amazing in this, you know, nice. I, got, I got my dream cast. Yeah. This, and yeah. I love it. And it all got approved. Everything got approved, awesome. you know. Um, so, so Crispin is just one of the best actors to work with. He's always got something interesting, you know, an idea to try and whatever. And because I had the time and autonomy, I, I tried everything, you know. And he had the idea... To when they're saying goodbye in episode 50, when his Digimon Gaumon, I think. Gaumon. Yeah, played by Skip Stelrick, fantastic. Uh, he uh, he says to him, you know, he wasn't an emotional guy. He was like, oh, a, no, yeah. he was like a sergeant in the <laughs> cavalry. I, I, I had him play him like Rick, Richard Widmark to John <laughs> Williams, you know, tie a yellow ribbon or whatever those movies are, the Alamo, all that stuff. And uh, he was, sir, yes, sir, you know, and he had him. I had him say, you know, choking back tears, finally saying emotionally, "I love you, sir." And Crispin said, "Wouldn't it be great if Thomas said, I know?" Oh, <laughs> yeah. I said, "Oh, yes. that'd be great. Let's try it." And instead, he was supposed to say, "I love you too." I love you too. Four lip flaps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know. Two lip flaps, and we just couldn't make it work. Ah. And sometimes when I I even think about that, yeah, yeah, when I wanted to do something, sometimes I can go into the edit bay and 
just remove two lip flaps, but something was going on in that shot. I couldn't do it. Or maybe there was a time frame. I don't remember. It's over 10 years ago now, but we couldn't do it, but we wanted to so oh, bad man. to yeah. have him say, I know. I respect yeah. that. I respect that. Yeah. If oh, oh man. <laughs> just doesn't work sometimes. No, I didn't even put, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. The lip we flaps, the amount e of like, yeah, yeah. yeah. We put Easter eggs all through that thing. You know, Axel had this thing called got it memorized in Kingdom Hearts mm -hmm. and Quentin uh, at one point his character points to his forehead saying, I got a scar right here. And we, Quentin was like, we got to say, got it memorized. So we changed it to like, I, I did this thing when I was a kid. I got it all memorized. And we put That's little awesome. Easter eggs throughout that thing. Because well, now we, we didn't go have back to ask permission. All. You have yeah. to. Yeah. It's my favorite season. Well, dang it. We have to watch oh, it. Drats. <laughs> Darn it. Homework. And, and, and then if you do watch it, uh, when? I'll, when when you do watch yeah, it, when <laughs> I'll come back and I'll tell you my idea for the whole thing. The whole thing's really an Easter egg, and it's a homage to Digimon in general. And it's on Hulu right, right now. We'll talk about it afterwards. Perfect. I, don't I know, like that. I don't want to give away everything. <laughs> Last little Guys. thing we're going to ask you here. Uh, anyone? Any bit of advice? What's your like solid go-to one-liner? A little bit of advice you give to anyone who's trying to like do what you do, make it in what you do. Well, you got to move to where the work is. There you go. <laughs> oh, mean, like, yeah. That's you where can, you started, right? Move to California. Move to California. You, you know, you can, now that everyone has a home studio, you can audition from anywhere. But not everyone wants you to work from home. Mm -hmm. You have to have a real professional setup. Sometimes they'll let you, you know, pay a little extra to uh, go to a local studio and do like a phone patch or a ISDN line. But Still, I find they want you in their studio where they can look at you and direct you. Uh, you know, the it, it hasn't changed that much. <laughs> There's something about right. looking at someone when you want to direct them, yeah. when you can make eye contact with them. And it's you, like, okay, it, you're human. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, it goes you, back to that collaboration, that give yeah. and take. Right, exactly. So, so I always say move to where the work is, especially any anime, you have to be in a studio to – Lip flap, you know, right. you have to yeah. sync. You have to lip sync, um, which I assume would be such a challenge. Yeah. It's hard. It's not easy. You know, that's why the same actors work over and over again. They're not only good at it; they're they're good at it and fast. Right. So they don't cost. They have the yeah, craft. you're kind of accustomed to that. Right. Kind right. Of. They don't cost the production any money. Right. Crispin Freeman is one. Um, uh, Steve Bloom is another. Mm. Uh, Dave Wittenberg is almost psychic about how good he is. <laughs> like, like you know, just in the preview, I like to record all the rehearsal. He gets it without ever seeing it. Like, how did you know he was going to pull <laughs> Yeah, I know that was the rehearsal, but we're good. Don't worry. Yeah, about it. yeah. yeah, yeah go take, home. Next I, line. <laughs> I take a lot of first takes because um, it's, you know, your first instinct works most of the time. Um, uh, who else is really good? Uh, there's so many good, you know, Colleen O'Shaughnessy is fantastic and Melissa Fawn is fantastic and uh, Dorothy Fawn and, you know, they're all, you know, th those people work all the time for a reason, you know? Yeah. Uh, all those shout outs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another uh, thing uh, is take a class. You have to take a class. You have to be an actor. You can have the greatest voice in the world, but you have to be an actor. On the other side of that, you can be the greatest actor, but if you're, the mic doesn't love your voice, yeah. you're not going to work, you know? Just like an on-camera actor, if the mic, if the camera doesn't love your face, <laughs> you could be Olivier. It you got a voice matter. for carpentry. Sorry. Right. Yes. You got a voice for <laughs> yeah. carpentry. L luckily, I have a very unique voice, but also it keeps me from doing a lot of things. Like, I can't play a lot of roles because I'm stuck with this voice. Even though I can do a lot of impersonations, believe me, I'm the best impersonator. <laughs> there me. it is. I probably do the best impersonation. I was going to ask for it at some point. <laughs> there it is. What did we say before we started? Uh, Tentamon Digivolve 2, Trump Mon, okay? Believe me. <laughs> I'm probably the best Mon there ever is. Oh Nobody Mons like me, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm Montastic. This is my ringtone. I do. <laughs> oh, tremendous love it. Mon. Um, oh my God. <laughs> We're going to need a clean recording for that. But um, even, though, <laughs> even though I can do impersonations, you know, I could smooth out my voice, but I'm not going to get cast too often for that. Right. They want that smoky voice. And because of that, I don't play that many leads. It's like typecasting it. Oh, but you get the cool bit. ones. I get the cool guy, right? I get the cool second guy who dies. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone loves and when have you a stand up. Right. <laughs> and Jeff Nimoy as. That's yeah. my career. You know? The last billing and Jeff Nimoy as. You know. That's awesome. Um, I know we said the last question, but no, I do. I've got nowhere to go. Cool. Please. We're going to have a two hour long episode. Okay, Please keep asking me. Um, 
So you've worked in a lot of like nerdy things and obviously it's impacted a lot of life, but mm. a, a lot of people's lives, but has it impacted yours and that you're now venturing into other nerdy things in your own thing, like that you're not working on? Oh yeah. That's a good point. Uh, Cause if you're not nerdy, then get out. No, <laughs> I'm a total nerd. My sister used to completely call me a nerd, you know, literally star Wars was my first thing. <laughs> back then that was the, uh, the only nerdy thing, you know, mm. unless you were a doctor who fan on PBS, mm. but that was, you know, now there's 18 doctor who's yeah. back then there was just one yeah. and it looked really <laughs> crappy on PBS and you never knew when it was on TV. <laughs> it wasn't, you know, even in TV guide back then. So, uh, so I, I've definitely nerded out over a lot of things, you know, the original Star Trek, Star Wars, just to name two. But um, I was also like a baseball geek, okay. you know, like I was a nerd with all, I like knew all these st statistics. And to this day, I could tell you every World Series winner and how many games and who they played the both wow. games since 19. I probably can go back to 1946. 49. Wow. 48. Now wow. that I'm thinking about That's it. That's impressive. Because <laughs> he went, oh no, I know 49. Yeah. I, like, mm. <laughs> I dig that. That's cool. But, well, then what's your favorite baseball team? I'm a New York Mets fan. I'm okay. a huge New York Mets fan. And you'll you'll see me at every convention wearing a, some kind of Mets paraphernalia. Okay. Nice. You know, I'm a huge New York Giants football team as well, you know, fan. Not a good year for either of those teams. <laughs> um, but, but, more to your question, you know, I have, you're, you're unemployed almost all the time when you're in this business, you know, you, you could be very lucky and get something that runs for years and years and years. Naruto! <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it still hurts! <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, who took over, she said, I have put on an extra wing in my house for all the jobs you've turned down. Whoa. She took over for me after Woof. Digimon and try and uh, Naruto. I'm, I'm happy to give it to her. She's fantastic. Why is Jeff Fetal in the corner? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also very ambitious and I want to do other things. I want to, yeah. I came here to make movies, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to star in movies first. And then I figured I'd be such a fantastic actor. They can't help but let me write and direct my own stuff. <laughs> and that quickly went away when I realized, you know, I'm just one of a trillion guys out here. And uh, I got very lucky to have a voice career at all, you know, but, um, I soon realized I really want to write and direct more than I want to act. Mm -hmm. um, that's where the fire is for you. That, for me, that's where it burns, yes. Yeah. Nice. And it's just very hard to break into. I've done some stuff. I directed Billy Crystal in a commercial, mm. wow. and I've done <laughs> some stuff, but... No I, big deal. I definitely don't have the career there that I wanted, you know? Then again, people would kill to be me for mm -hmm. yeah. the career I did have. But it's just Yet. that... Yeah. Not there yet. Well, well, this is what I'm leading to. So I, when you're going through these months sometimes or years sometimes of unemployment, you get down on everything. You get very depressed. You get down on your life, my career choices, my life choices, all these things. And then you go to a convention and mm. the nerds remind you how important you are to them, you know? Oh, yeah. And I sort of wrote this movie I mentioned that I'm going to be shooting in um, Madison, Wisconsin. Geek Con with a K Con. Um, <laughs> just, like, just, just like Con, you bloodsucker. Just like uh, just like Con or Cone from uh, Bleach that I, yeah. I, I directed. Oh, cool, yeah. I directed that. You know, they spelled the same way, K O N. So, uh, but it's Con, Geek Con. Um, so I sort of wrote this movie about a guy like me uh, who uh, is going through these, you know doubts about his life and how he threw it all away for this shitty thing called anime you know, mm. <laughs> because it paid the bills and and then he goes to these conventions and he realizes how much of an impact he had on other people's lives and it make it gives an impact to his life and i am that person you know you go to these places like i mentioned before and yeah. and you meet the fans and you realize like just here you guys the fact that you even know my work is <laughs> yeah. you know i went to i took my sister to uh, an anime club that uh, a friend of mine i went back to brooklyn brooklyn to visit a friend who taught at a high school and uh, there was an anime club and she wanted me to speak to them and there's a long line for my autograph and 
I said, you know, to my sister, she couldn't believe that these kids knew who I was and all this stuff. And I said, you know, usually I get 20 bucks for my autograph at a convention. She was like, who would pay 20 bucks for your autograph? <laughs> Thanks for the people. Vote of confidence. All right. People. And Real like, people. She's like, I'm going to go see if you gave me any birthday cards. I'm going to put it on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the, without knowing it, the same thing that I inspired in people inspired me back, but it took me 50 years to figure it out. You know what I mean? So there you go. I like that. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. And I'm looking scene. forward to that. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but yeah, it's like that right way you know, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that for sure. Go where the love yeah. is. Thanks. Mm. Well, yeah. that is awesome. our episode. <laughs> yeah. Can I tell um, you one more quick story? Oh, yeah, please, please do. Right. Was it interesting? I just mentioned Bleach. <laughs> I mentioned yeah. Bleach. And I directed a lot of Bleach. I was offered it first, and I turned it down <laughs> uh, for Digimon Data Squad. I just didn't want to double up. Um, and uh, so other people directed, but then they had these filler episodes, and I happened to be Notorious free. Filler. So I, I directed and wrote the fillers. Um, anyway, so Johnny Young Bosch, yeah. who played uh, Vash the Stampede, mm -hmm. we never met. He was wow. He was always doing Vash, want, and then I would come in and do Wolfwood. We never even passed. And now he's right. each way. And right, sometimes he would record first, and I'd have someone to play off, or I'd record first, and he'd have someone to play off. And so we never met. And the day I show up at Bleach, he shows up, and I go, Vash the Stampede, meet Nicholas D. Wolfwood. Yeah. <laughs> Holy yeah. shit! Oh, wow, finally. And, uh, <laughs> And we, uh, we became cool. good friends. I directed him a lot in Bleach, and then I went on to direct him in some other stuff as well. And we did a convention together. That's awesome. And uh, it's fascinating. To I think love about that, that story. That separation <laughs> between between voice actors. Oh yeah, yeah. A lot of people yeah. don't think about that. Like a lot of times, you see these animated movies stuff like that. None of those actors. Yeah, they never worked together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The Simpsons used to all do it together. And now they haven't done it together for years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's pretty amazing. Like I've as an audio engineer, I've gotten to sit. And um, pretty awesome BO sessions, but it is interesting. And they don't even, sometimes they don't even have the lines for the other person. And so they're like just doing their stuff. Right. Yeah. And you're like, it takes a little bit more acting, I think. Oh, yeah. That's also where the director over. comes in to play when yeah. you say, yeah, that's not. I'm waiting. They're going to react to this way or that. You've got to react differently. Right. Yeah. And it's kind of, but it goes back to what you said too, is like a lot of people don't think being a voiceover that it's, it's acting. You yeah. are acting. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You got to remember that part. It's not just having a cool voice. Like right. you said. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I love that story. Wow. <laughs> it was interesting. It was. Worth it was. So it was. Grandpa Tom approved? I approve. All okay. right. Nice. Interesting He's story. done well, sir. I approve a lot. I've got a million of them, but not in 66 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. We'll so have you back. Everybody. Sure. Thank you so much for listening. Um, we thank really, you to Jeff yeah, yeah, for coming out. You get Please the number one. I'll, I'll come back after you've watched uh, all of Digimon. Yes. Yes. It's a deal. Yeah, That's we'll a have a deal. Digimon episode. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Okay, okay. Cool. All right, Tom. <laughs> okay. And you will be one of the nerds and we'll just nerd on yeah. for Digimon. Oh, go. well, I got some good stuff to nerd out with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please. You're fun. always yeah. welcome back here, sir. <laughs> so as always, I'll bring some toys. You, could sign. you guys can follow us on Instagram, uh, Nerd on the Podcast, Twitter, Nerd on the Pod. Facebook, search us, Nerd on the Podcast. On YouTube, again, we're not big boys yet. So just search Nerd on the Podcast. All of our episodes go to YouTube, so you can watch them there. Ali does them beautifully. <laughs> oh, God. They're so good. Um, you can see me on Instagram, Joshua S. Manley. And my Twitter, mm, Tom's Tom favorite. hates it. Just Josh and you. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> See, Jeff likes it. I we'll get it in post. It. Yeah, we'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll fix it in post. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, what about you, Tom? Uh, my name is Tom at Tall Dark Not Ugly on everything and everything. That means Instagram, Snapchat, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, PSN, but it's underscore not with a zero. And uh, you can find me on IMDb as Thomas Beborosuth. You can find me on YouTube as Thomas Beborosuth. Uh, See all the stuff I work on. And some things I work with Corey on. Yeah. on. Uh, that is at We Are Storyboard, B O R E D, uh, We Are Storyboard.com, or you can find me at Corey89. I, underst I understood like 20% of all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd be time. terrible for voice acting. <laughs> Uh, Ali, I'm at Future Foe on Twitter. You can find me on YouTube. Search Future Foe. I'm, I'm right there. 
Yeah, um, you can come big, watch me play video awesome. games. He on is Twitch a big as well. boy on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, um, and Jeff. I try to uh, keep it Jeff Nimoy in most things, so you, it's easy to find. Twitter is at Jeff Nimoy, and uh, Instagram is Jeff Nimoy. And uh, I have the Jeff Nimoy anime page on Tumblr and the Jeff Nimoy fan page on uh, Facebook. Awesome. I think it's also called the anime page. And that's where I uh, say where all my uh, convention appearances are going to be. Oh, cool. Cool. Any, anything I'm, awesome. I have going on. And then cookingcaveman.com if, yeah. if you're so inclined. I'm going to check that out. And uh, <laughs> yeah. I've also got a free dating site it's completely free Whoa. called sameplate.com that matches people by the food you eat oh, Whoa. That's cool. so even if it's just junk food or you know if it's a peanut allergy whatever you have you can find I dig that partner. that's, that's cool. awesome that's yeah. a lot of just fun. start a conversation a dating app that works yeah <laughs> there it's, we not, go. it's not an app yet it's oh. just a site a at site. this point yeah um, yes soon. yeah uh, there's a mobile version though and uh, it's just you know just start a conversation about it makes it's really so easy. much sense and it's, right? and it's completely free so there's no I'm not making money so it, go 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 yeah. find yeah. love meet go your perfect love. person uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it runs itself for a dollar a month so it doesn't cost me much that's <laughs> awesome uh, well, and I think uh, that's all my plugs yes yes cool <laughs> awesome thank you so much Jeff thank for you. being thank on you. the my show my pleasure my pleasure I'm glad to I'm honored to be your first guest that's awesome but I'm the guest cherry everybody at home as always nerd on Ending broadcast.